What's going on guys? Welcome back. And in today's video, I want to share with you some really simple, easy tricks and tips on how to paint power weapons, capes and plasma. Now, if you're sort of entry level and new to the hobby, hopefully this will give you the confidence and the ability to be able to start getting into it and doing these sort of items on your models. They're really simple tricks and nothing too technical here, I promise you. Anyone that's sort of more of a competent painter, you might sort of see something that you haven't thought of or that maybe you've thought about doing but decided against doing and might want to try to be able to then springboard your own painting off of what I'm doing here. So I could help you in a roundabout way. So stick around anyway. Anyway, guys, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's get on with the video. Well, power my sword. So to begin with, we want to get ourselves our handy dandy and nifty wifty power sword and some lead belcher. You'll see in the background the other colors that I'm going to be using. We'll get into those in a bit. But for now, you just want to layer up and get that silver onto the sword. So that's going to be our base color that we're going to be working off of. So now that we've got our silver down, we want to grab our cantor blue, which is going to be our darkest blue color. And then in a diagonal motion, brush the paint on down by the hilt and then up by the pointy end. Remember the bit that you're sticking with and then leaving a gap in the central part. We'll come back to that afterwards and just do a quick dry brush with that cantor blue so that we get that depth in there. But this isn't so essential and you can skip that if you want to. I like to do it because that means when we go over it later of our next step, it gives that nice depth to the color. So my camera seems to have focused on this, so it should look a little bit like it does now. So with a 50-50 mix of McCrag Blue and Ice Blue from Vallejo, I'm just going to fill in the rest of that gap area, which we just dry brushed over. So we've got our dark blue, a nice solid light blue, followed by a dark blue again. to so give it a nice central glow point, so that looks like it's heating up from the central part of the sword. So for what can be our last step, which gives it a nice marbled effect, get the amount of paint that you would for a dry brush onto your brush, and in one motion, just flick up and brush it on all over the sword, and it gives it a nice sort of marbled effect. But if you want to push it one step further and actually paint the lightning on, we're going to do one more step with the matte white. So remember, as I've just said, we can leave it at this nice marbled effect, which gives a nice sort of power essence to it or we can push that one step further and put the white lightning effect on there. So for this, I use matte white from Army Painter and I use a fine, thin brush. You want it damp, but not wet. because You don't want the paint to flow off it too freely, but also you want it to be able to come off the brush without dipping it in too much. I'm really sorry about the focus on this bit. It does clear up in a moment. So what I've done here is just painted up the nodes, which are what the electricity is coming out of, in white it's giving that nice power build up and then i'm going to do one solid line up the length of the sword and then from there i'm going to be branching off and doing separate white lines try not to go over the same one more than once otherwise you're just going to get too thick of a line and you're not going to like the end result from it don't worry from a distance this looks much better than it does close up but you will get better at this over time i absolutely dread doing this part usually but after doing it so many times, I feel like I'm getting better and better with each attempt. You know, you would have thought by now that hit and record would be something that I'd remember to do. So I'm going to go through the motions and mime out what I've just done here. So I've taken this white and I've dry brushed it all over the all over that cape. And then I've got a smaller brush and I've got up into the crevices with it. If you do this in a more disassembled sort of way, you won't need the smaller brush, but that's what I needed to get into all these little crevices because I decided why not make life a little bit more difficult. Once we've done that and that's all down, we're going to move on to our contrast paint and I've used Blood Angels Red as I want this to be a red cape. If you choose to use a different color, I'm sure you can use the same process just with different colors. Um, so we want to get that down absolutely all over, as I just said, all the parts of the cape which we want to be red. And then once we've done that we're, and it's dried, we're gonna go into our next steps. Now that we've got that stage all done, it should look like this. And now we're gonna put down Mephiston Red. One of my red colors that I own, basically. 
So what we're going to do with that is we're going to get it onto all the high up areas, all the raised parts, not going down too much into those creases or the recess areas. So we're going to leave them alone and just leave the contrast paint down in that area. Now, once we've done this step, it should look a little bit like this. So now that our cape's ready to go to that next stage, again, letting that layer dry, we're going to go on to a 50-50 mix of Mephiston Red and Wild Rider Red. So mix those two together and then again onto the higher raised up areas, but we're going to try and cover a bit less this time, leaving some areas of the Mephiston Red still showing. Once we've gone through and done all of that across all the top layers, we are going to be ready to do just our final layer, which is going to be Wild Rider Red. And that's going to be our top sort of uh, edge highlight almost. So we're going to edge highlight pretty much the whole lower part of the cape and all those top higher parts. After this, you can come in and do and really wash down that 50-50 mix that we're putting on now and sort of paint over the layers and that will give a nice glaze to it and blend the layers together. But that is totally optional and you do not need to do that. We can leave it as it is and I think it looks pretty pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the results that I get from doing this. So, you know, you might be, you might not be, you might want to push it further, do less, do more. Okay, at the end of the day, these are your models. I'm merely trying to share some advice and tips that I've learned from my own mistakes that I've made in the past and just through trial and trial and error. How easy you ask? This easy. Paint your coils white, let the paint dry. Really water down your paint. So I'm gonna use blue glow effect because that's what all my plasma weapons are. And then I'm just going to wash it on so that the heavier pigment will sink down into that recessed area leaving the tops of the coil a lighter color and that's instant sort of oh, glazing almost. So yeah, so in one hit, you've done your darker color and your lighter color. And then all we need to do is just let that dry, come along with some white and then hit those top corners and then paint a little bit just around the actual, the actual weapon to give it that nice little glow effect. And you're done. I, it's that honestly that easy it doesn't need to be hard it's not difficult this is the easiest step and the quickest step out of all of them so there you go guys i hope you've enjoyed my tips and tricks for doing power weapons capes any sort of and plasma that's the words so if you've got any other sort of tips and tricks or anything to add to it please put it down in the comments below I would love to sort of read them because you guys help me learn. Uh, I like to think that I help you guys learn at points, I suppose. But just remember, at the end of the day, guys, these are your models. You paint them how you want and whatever level you have painted them to, they're going to be perfect and they're going to be yours. They are your models, doesn't matter what level they're painted at. They could be the best painted models in the world or they could be the worst painted models in the world. Doesn't matter. So they belong to you, they're in your army, you're the one that's going to get to play with them and enjoy them. Anyway guys, I really do hope to see you in the next one.